So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can go about patching a binary using Ghidra. I'm going to show you this using a really basic example. So I have this program that sets up some code to scan in for an input, and then it compares it to some secret password. And if that comparison is equal to zero, meaning that they're equal, it outputs valid password, and otherwise it outputs invalid password. And our goal is thinking about a situation where we didn't know this password, and where we couldn't easily just like find it through the disassembly, how could we bypass the password? How could we get past it to always say that there's a valid password? That's where our goal is going to be. So let me just show you the behavior of the program before we change anything. So right now, if I type in anything, I'm going to get an invalid password. And if I type in a secret password, then I get valid password as a result. When we take a look at the disassembly of this in Ghidra, the actual setup of how this works is pretty simple. What happens is, you know, aside from all of the different like initialization of variables and such, basically what we're doing is we're loading in the secret password into memory. We then call string compare, and then we do this test. What this test is doing is it's checking to see if the result is equal to zero. And you can see that here in the actual C code itself. And if it isn't, so this JNZ means that if it's not zero, then it jumps to this label here. And this label here does all of the invalid password stuff. If it is equal to zero, this jump doesn't execute, which brings us into the valid password stuff. And then the question here is, okay, well, how do we make it so that this jump here, the one that goes to the invalid password, never happens? And there's a lot of different ways that you can go about doing this. One of the easiest ways would be to turn this into a no op, which means that no operation actually happens. So rather than doing the comparison, it just does nothing. That would be the easiest solution to this problem. So let's see how we could do that. Let's right click on this line and we're going to select patch instruction. This is going to allow us to edit the instruction. And what we could do is we could delete everything except for no op and then just press enter. Notice how that changes the code substantially. Now, when we look at the actual code here, it shows that it does a comparison, but then it just always outputs valid password. The rest of the code is actually unreachable, like the parts about the invalid password, because there's no way to actually get to them anymore. Once we finish, we end up skipping over it to the return. So notice how you could never reach this code here, which is the invalid password. So now there's no way for us to get the invalid password message just by changing this to a no op. So that's one way that we can actually decompile and patch this binary. Now to export this, we're just going to go into file and we're going to go ahead and select export program. You need to select the format for your particular device. In my case, I'm on Linux, which would have an ELF format. And you would have seen this when you first dragged the binary in. It would have told you what format it was. Uh, for other devices, you may have to select PE for executable, but ELF would be the one for Linux. We'll press on OK to export that. And now we have an export of it available on, uh, I put it to home slash Scott. You can see the start file there. To be able to execute it, I have the chmod to add x to it, which will add execution privileges. Now, when I run start, what you're going to see is the following. If I run this, I can input anything, and I get a valid password. That's because there's no way to actually get to the invalid password code anymore. I always have a valid password. So this is a very rudimentary example of patching binaries. Of course, it's not often going to be this easy for you to patch a binary. And there's always going to be different things that you want to do when you're patching a binary. But this just gets you set up and familiar with the idea of how you would patch a binary and how Ghidra is able to do binary patching and exporting of binary programs. So thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.